would help spur competition and hopefully get us to the point where broadband is super cheap, super fast, you know, super reliable. Ryan Single is an open internet fellow at Stanford Law School's Center for Internet and Society. I'm Megan McCarty Carino, and that's Marketplace Tech. This is APM. Eight forty-three. It is Thursday morning on KSJE, and it is now time to talk a little bit about the San Juan Symphony. Thomas Hoiser is joining me this morning to talk a bit about the symphony and their new season that starts very soon. Thomas is joining us remotely. There he is. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Scott. Thanks for having me. Of course, it's great to see you. And gosh, it's season thirty-seven. Can that be possible? Thirty-seven. That's right. Twenty twenty-two is here. Uh, we're so excited for everything on offer this year, Scott. It's going to be a great year. Very good. And the uh, the theme of the season is connect with the pulse. That's right. Yeah, this season, you know, this idea of connection is something we're so passionate about at San Juan Symphony, connecting with our communities uh, throughout the Four Corners, especially in Farmington and Durango. And this is sort of a musical reference. Uh, connecting with the pulse is something that we do as musicians, right? Every piece of music has a pulse and there's a kind of rhythmic drive that the musicians get on board with that and really relate to each other through that pulse. So that connection that we have as an orchestra is something that we hope translates into the community. We want the San Juan Symphony to be really the musical pulse of our community. We want everyone to be able to connect with that and to be able to enjoy these concerts in person or online, uh, wherever our audiences are. So again, this idea of connection, very important this year as we come back from the pandemic. Indeed, indeed. And I know folks are thrilled to see another uh, subscription series of uh, four concerts planned in both uh, Farmington and Durango, correct? That's right. Yes. Yeah. One concert in Farmington, one concert in Durango. So those concert weekends, uh, there's many opportunities to enjoy the music, no matter where you are. Right. And, and the reason that you and I are talking in August, though, is because um, season tickets are going on sale. They are already, I think, on sale, right, in some areas. And so um, that's a great offer and a great deal for folks to get, a, get on, on board with that. That's right. Yeah, it is. It's amazing that it's August, actually. And here we are uh, getting ready for this 37th season. Yes, uh, August 8th, this coming Monday, is the beginning of our new season ticket sales. You're right. Some of our renewals have already happened. Uh, we are so grateful for all of our season ticket buyers, especially those who are renewing for uh, multiple years. It means so much to have your support. But yes, August 8th, this Monday, new season tickets go on sale. And as you mentioned, we have some great deals. You know, the first time season ticket buyers in Durango can take 50% off the price of their seats and in Farmington 25% off. The seating uh, costs are variable depending on which section you're in in Durango and Farmington, but great deal, Scott. We want this to be something that is accessible to a really wide swath of our community. Uh, we understand that making the commitment to a season ticket requires looking at your calendar, putting these dates on there, but there are four subscription concerts included uh, with the season ticket. So it's four weekends a year from uh, September, excuse me, October through April, and we believe they are babysitter worthy events. So for folks out there who have that extra consideration of finding childcare for their families, this is absolutely worth it. That every San Juan Symphony event is a special event, and we know that there's, uh, you know, so many good reasons to put these events on your calendar. So get those season tickets. Come Monday, you get a great discount if it's your first time, and again, something on offer for everyone. Very true. And that term is something I learned from you, Thomas Hoiser, babysitter worthy, and it couldn't be uh, more true, I think. Talk to me just a bit about what you have lined up for these for these concerts as we take a look at the at the poster beginning with the first concert weekend in October, the 8th and 9th. That's right, October 8th and 9th. This is a concert we're calling Bolero, French Impressions. Now, of course, Bolero is a great work for the Symphony Orchestra by Maurice Ravel from the 20th century, early 20th century work. Uh, Ravel conceived this as a kind of exercise in rhythm and orchestration, and it has one of the great musical pulses of all time, this yan ta 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 tan ya ta ta tan 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 this drum pulse that 
pervades the entire 15 minute work and over that is this beautiful familiar melody to many people ya di da 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 dum ba da da di da di di da 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 and that sort of overlay of the melody and the rhythm is an incredible tapestry for Ravel to show us all of his great orchestral colors. And those orchestral colors come from this French tradition, French Impressionist tradition that we're going to be exploring with the music of um, Claude Debussy, namely, and also composers like Lily Boulanger, and Arthur Honegger. The great piece by Arthur Honegger on this program is called Pacific 231. It's a depiction of a steam locomotive accelerating and then finally getting to its maximum speed and putting on the brakes and coming into the station, which appeals, I think, to our uh, Durango and Farmington communities who so love their train here uh, in the Four Corners region. So lots of beautiful, fascinating French music on this first October program. That gets us started in 2022. And I'll just jump right into November, Scott. Yes. Uh, we have <laughs> the uh, so much music to unpack. Uh, we have the Mozart Requiem on offer in November. This is a work from 1791, the year that Mozart died. Those of you who have seen the movie Amadeus uh, know the famous story of his leaving the work incomplete at his death and working on it on his deathbed. Maybe the movie's a little exaggerated, but still, this is Mozart's final musical statement. It is incredibly powerful. And we have four brilliant soloists coming from around the country and the Four Corners to participate uh, with our community chorus in Farmington, the Caliente Singers, as well as the Durango Choral Society and the Chamber Singers at Fort Lewis College. So that's what's on offer just in the fall. It's really something. Very good. And those dates are the November 5th and 6th for our radio audience, so they can uh, check their calendars and, and make plans to, to join the symphony. Um, one thing I had neglected to mention is I am a board member of the San Juan Symphony, so I always like to disclose that to the audience. But uh, that takes us into 2023 doesn't it? And two concerts it there. It does, yes. And and one thing we should mention is that for audiences interested in purchasing season tickets, of yes. course, visit our website, sanwansymphony.org. There you'll find instructions on whether to buy on our website or visit the uh, community concert halls website and phone lines. Uh, operators are standing by. We're so excited to be uh, getting these tickets out. And there are other sort of off subscription concerts that we'll talk about as well that include the Nutcracker come Christmas time. But you're right, 2023 February 2023, the symphony will be back with our third subscription program that's part of the season package. That concert's called Visionary Beethoven, and we are playing Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. This is a work from 1813 that still today packs as much importance and power as any work created in the 19th century. You know, his symphonies are the most iconic in the repertoire, and my good friend James Foster said, well, if you pick an odd-numbered Beethoven, you can't go wrong. But this Seventh Symphony is truly uh, dynamic, exciting, passionate, and it has this very famous slow movement that we call the Funeral March. Oddly enough, it's not uh, named that in the score, but it still has this connotation of being this incredible, passionate funeral dirge that I think is one of Beethoven's most popular uh, musical works. And that's uh, February, late February of 2023. Right, and then the we move into and, April. The 25th of 2023. and 26th, I was going to say. In our season say. finale this year, we're calling Poetry in Motion. This features Brahms's fourth symphony, his final symphony. Uh, lots of great masterworks on display this year, really, hopefully playing music that people know and love. That's part of our mission this year and connecting with everyone is to bring back these classic great symphonic works for the orchestra to enjoy as well as the audience. And on this Poetry in Motion concert, in addition to Brahms's brooding and incredibly uh, elaborate Fourth Symphony, we'll have the first instance of a double orchestra where the San Juan Symphony will be joined side by side with the San Juan Symphony Youth Orchestra. So this is going to be a great opportunity to uh, mentor our youth, uh, have them performing side by side with our professionals. Uh, this is a great chance for us to pack the stage and really make an incredible impression with uh, some music that we're still figuring out what's the best once we figure out what students come back into the orchestra. So this is a, a, call, a call to action for our student community to join our youth orchestra program. The deadline to register is early September. You can find all that information on our website as well, sanwonsymphony.org. Very good, very good. And of course, that will be April 22nd, 23rd, that weekend. 
Absolutely, yes. And and then again, there there are these sort of off subscription programs that you can find information online as well. The Nutcracker uh, coming up in December. Uh, this is a, the return of the State Street Ballet to Durango at the Community Concert Hall. And then in May of 2023, we have a family concert that we're calling Movie Music. Uh, this is a great introduction to the orchestra for families and children of all ages. Uh, playing the movie, movie music is something that very much connects young people to the symphony orchestra. It's a sound that they have in their ears anyway. So there'll be music of John Williams, Enrico Morricone, Hans Zimmer, uh, Danny Elfman, and many others. Very good. And those tickets are pretty specially priced too for the family concert. That's right. Yeah, there's a great discount for families. You know, we, we want to make it affordable. Again, babysitter worthy is not the only factor. It's also a, a shorter program, afternoon program, a sort of introduction to the symphony for, for young people. And you're right, it, it's important to note that we do have those discounted prices. I believe they are only $5 tickets available at the door. Very good. Well, it looks like a great season. I, I, it's, uh, it's wonderful to see, um, gosh, you've got uh, Mozart and Beethoven in the same season. So I think a lot of folks are thrilled about that, Thomas Heuser. And, of course, it's always great to have you on the program. I know we'll talk again, uh, hopefully, ahead of each concert to get a little more in-depth into um, the music and, and kind of what it all means. And, and the explanation is only you can explain it to us. And so we really appreciate it, Thomas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Scott, for having me. You bet. Always great to see you. That's Thomas Heuser, the music director of the San Juan Symphony, getting ready to celebrate season 37, my guest here on KSJE. This is the